has nothing to do with politics, so don't worry about that. Um, conservative forces versus non-conservative forces. I think what I'm going to do first is give examples of each kind, and, and then we'll talk about uh, the differences between them and what makes something conservative and what makes something non-conservative. So, uh, weight or the force of gravity is a conservative force. We have springs. Springs are a conservative force. Uh, the elastic force, I guess, is a better way to say that. We have the elastic force. Um, Electromagnetic force, we're not going to deal with that this semester. We will, of course, deal with that next semester. Um, but really the ones that are important for us this year are weight and springs. And then with a non-conservative force, lots of things can be non-conservative, but the most important one that we're going to talk about is friction. And, and it's a little bit weird to define something in the way that we're about to define this, but you're going to have to uh, stick with me on it. So, the work done by a conservative force does not depend on the path taken. So what does this mean? All right, so let's say Oh, let me go on. Let's say we have a box. And we lift the box up to here. Then we bring it back down to here. And let's say in situation two, we take the same box, M, from here, starting at the bottom, and we just lift it up to this height. So, in situation one, uh, the work done by the weight is equal to, on, on this first trip, we go one, two, three, four, five. So let's just say, 5 mg, but the weight's in the opposite direction, so negative 5 mg, and then we go 1, 1, 2, 3, and then it's positive 3 mg. So in this case, the work done by gravity for the entire trip is negative 2 mg. Gravity's pulling down, we lifted the thing up, but we're just talking about the work done by gravity. Now, in this case, we go straight from here to our final spot. So the work done by weight in this case is what we go 2 up times mg, but that's in the opposite direction of our weight, so it's negative. And we see here that it doesn't matter how I got from start right here to finish, whether we just went straight there or we went in a roundabout way, um, either way we do it we end up with the same amount of work. Now, for a non-conservative force, let's talk about friction. Friction is very path dependent. If we start here 
and we slide an object this far as opposed to coming up in a weird way and landing here uh, path one and path two for path two more work is done against friction more work is done by friction because we traveled further the path really 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 does matter for friction that's a very important thing so um, these two things are not I don't think that's the best definition for what a conservative force is I don't think it's that practical but it's something that you will get questions on and it's something that every single book ever starts off with when they define a conservative force where it matters okay is when we talk about work done against a conservative force so the work done against a conservative force oh it's not a good word work done against a conservative force is stored as potential energy. Essentially, if I do work against a conservative force, I get that work back out. Whereas work done against a non-conservative force is lost. And you forgive me if I abbreviate non-conservative force. So NC is for non-conservative. The work done against a non-conservative force is lost to heat. So we'll look at a we talked a little bit about how this worked in class today. Um, this has huge implications for the conservation of energy um, and I'm going to talk briefly about that. And we'll look at some examples maybe tomorrow about different ways that we can talk about conservative and non-conservative forces. Uh, but the thing that's really important, the thing that we're going to use in this unit and in and, and further units is the conservation of energy. So, as with any conservation law, um, the total energy of a closed system never uh, increase or decrease it just changes forms So for us, that's going to be, let's say we have a nice, a nice mass rolling down a ramp. If we start off up here and look at this thing 
as it slides down the ramp. It has different energy at each one of these points, or, or energy looks different at each one of these points. So, at 1, the total energy, or the energy at 1, is equal to um, just the potential energy, mgh. That's all. There's nothing else to it. All of the energy is potential. At 2, energy at 2, we have a combination, MgH2, we have some potential energy, and we have kinetic energy, velocity at 2 squared. So energy at 2 is a combination of potential and kinetic energies. And then down here at 3, uh, the energy at 3 is going to be just kinetic. So the block started off with potential energy. It lost some of that at point 2, so it became kinetic. And then down at the bottom, it's all kinetic energy. Um, what the conservation of energy says is that the energy at 1 is equal to the energy at 2 is equal to the energy at 3. Uh, and I think overall we had a pretty good concept of this today as we went through stuff. So what's going to start to happen with the problems that we do in class is that we're going to bring back everything that we've been doing so far. We're going to throw energy on top of that. In my opinion, I think energy helps explain things better. So as, as, as the videos progress, we'll be a little bit more descriptive about that. How do we stop this thing?